Really? The fact-checking process always starts with the same basic question, really. According to the Duke Reporters Lab, in 2022, there were around 400 teams of investigators and journalists in more than 100 countries around the world who carry out fact-checking. In Europe, there are over 110 fact-checking services. Fact-checking is needed because false or misleading information can undermine people's opinions and influence their actions. Verifying claims with reliable information from credible sources is one effective way of countering misinformation. Mis-, dis- and malinformation don't stay within national borders, but even travel from one side of the world to the other. That's why international networking of fact-checkers is crucial. The most important network of researchers, fact-checkers and media educators dedicated to disinformation is the European Digital Media Observatory, EDMO. Its aim is to create a European network with regional centers of excellence with a particular focus on tackling disinformation. The Nordic countries are involved in EDMO through the Nordic Network Initiative. However, the abundance of information is so mind-blowing that even if there were thousands of fact-checkers, it wouldn't be enough, right? That's why each of us need to be able to stop, think and check the facts for ourselves, at least to some extent. And that's something that the professional fact-checkers' working methods can help with. The tools and approaches used by fact-checkers have become an essential part of digital information literacy. Fortunately, these online literacies can be learned, taught and developed. Here, let me explain a few basic methods fact-checkers use every day. Research shows that the method called lateral reading has proven to be very effective. When confronted with pre-known online information, fact-checkers immediately open several tabs in their browser and look for information about the organization or the person behind it. Lateral reading also works when browsing through the stream of images and videos on social media platforms. Another useful tool is called reverse image search, which you can find for example from Google, Bing and Deny. But there are a number of other free online tools as well. The Nordisk Consortium, which I mentioned before, has actually collected and published a fact-checking tools database, which includes more than 250 tools connected to various parts of the fact-checking process. Professional fact-checking seeks to be as transparent as possible, so that the reader can judge for themselves the reliability of the sources and form their own opinion on the matter. Expert opinion should always be checked by at least one other independent source. If provided conflicting interpretations of the claim, the conflict must be openly documented. In difficult cases, more sources and experts are sought to verify the claim. But who checks the fact-checker? This is an important question. The professional fact-checkers have their own transparency codes to answer this. The IFC and Global Code of Principles, the EDMO Network membership, which is largely based on the IFC and codification, and the newly established European Fact-Checking Standards Network, EFCSN. If there was one fact that I think everyone should check, it would be to go and check this. Which organizations in your own country are doing fact-checking? If you come across a significant claim that you think a professional should check, send a message to the fact-checkers and see what they can do. While waiting for a response, get familiar with their tips, tools and tutorial videos. Three questions will also help you to evaluate information. Who made the claim? What evidence has been provided to support it? And what do other sources say about it? Remember these next time you find yourself wondering, really? <laughs>